Well, hello there, friends. This is Joanna. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully, you guys are ready for another burst of inspiration, or so I hope. Uh, today's project is so fun. I have never used this technique in the past myself. I have seen others use it. So it was really fun to try it out and see if it actually works. And I've tried it over and over to make sure that it does work and it does work. <laughs> so hopefully you guys will totally enjoy this tutorial and do let me know what you think of it. So with that being said, let's get started. So this stamp set has been a staple at my channel. I've used it so many times. I bought it from Simon Says Stamp and the name is Ornate Background. It's, it's so amazing. Well, so we're going to use the stamp and I also have some white clay. So what we're going to do is we are going to squeeze that clay into the grooves of the, this background stamp. So you'll want to make sure that you really squish it in there. Make sure sure that you get all those teeny tiny um, uh, pieces and crevices that are in the stamp. Now once you're happy and satisfied and you know that you got it all covered, we're going to take um, a blade and we're just going to remove the excess of clay from the top. Now you want to make sure that you don't go too crazy with it because you don't want to damage your stamp. And if there is, if you're lifting any clay, as I did in just one second, you want to just put it back in there and shave as much of it as you possibly can. So you can see the image uh, in the rubber stamp and the clay is just in the crevices. So it may take a little while, but just take your time. It's well worth it. And if you're missing a little spot here and there because the clay came out, either when you were pull, you know, when you didn't put it well enough or maybe with the, when you were shaving it with the blade, just add some more clay to it and go ahead and shave it again and it's going to look amazing it really it's going to look really really good when you're we're gonna do the technique so now that I'm happy with the clay being in the stamp I'm going to grab some black clay and that one is rolled out on the thickest setting of the pasta machine and I'm going to stamp that image onto the clay well kind of sort of right I'm placing it on top of the black clay and now you want to squeeze 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 and as much as you can you know hit every tiny corner of that stamp to make sure that that white clay gets a nice transfer onto the black and you can start pulling it up and if you see that the white is still coming up just go back in and start squeezing 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 and uh, it should come off just like that and if there are any pieces that are sticking up don't worry just take your finger or maybe um, some kind of a, a crafting tool and push it back down and it should be uh, it should look just great but look at that texture you really cannot feel the texture <laughs> of course you can't feel the texture you cannot see the texture but texture is amazing so here you have it i'm gonna try it again to make sure that it does work and yes it does work the transfer totally totally works and it is just coming out so darn nice i'm so in love with it now it's time to start cutting and i'm using this um, football size or football size football shape cutter and yes i know the top is missing but that's because i really don't need the top i'm going to cut it off anyways so i'm just shaping my own pendant here and these are the shapes of the pendants today and uh, there you have it it looks so pretty my goodness it, it really is so so nice so of course I want to try it with my scraps and I use some pinks and purples from my past pendants and I just want to see how they are going to come out. So the same thing again, I'm just placing a bunch of clay in my uh, in, into the crevices of my stamp and shaping as much off as I can and filling in any gaps that are, you know, or any clay that popped up. I mean the same exact thing and I cannot wait to see how this is going to turn out on black 
clay. So let's flip it over and see what we got. I know that this is kind of repetitive, but I really wanted to make sure that this technique works and it totally, totally works. It came out so nice and I cannot, I'm, I know I keep talking about the texture, the texture is just so amazing. You guys are going to love this, absolutely love it. And what a way uh, to use your scraps. All right, so now my pendants are baked. The one on the left is going to stay black and white because that's for my girlfriend who likes black and white. And the other two I am going to color with alcohol inks. So I have the Piñata Sunshine Yellow, then I have Ranger's Terracotta, and the cranberry. I'm gonna start with the cranberry and a nice thing about this is that now the clay is baked and I can really do the detail alcohol alcohol uh, ink painting. So if you know you you can really really get into those little tiny crevices and you can make sure that your you know your uh, petals are one color and maybe the middle is a different color and so on and so forth. So after the cranberry, I went in with the terracotta, which re you really cannot tell that much difference, but I think it was a nice transition between the cranberry and the yellow that I ended up using at the end. Now, if you're not comfortable painting just like that or coloring, you don't even like it, you know, just put some color, some drops of alcohol in, uh, on it and it's going to look just as beautiful. And here is the yellow. It uh, definitely, you know, brings this pendant to a different dimension. So, so fun. I absolutely love how this is turning out. Now, this technique definitely works great with black in the back because if you are going to get some of the alcohol ink on the black you really cannot uh, tell that you just did that so here's the sunshine yellow from piñata and stream which you know it's my favorite from uh ranger and that stream really come is coming in really really uh green but that's okay we're going to fix all that and here I'm just doing the last touch-ups and uh, I let the pendants bake but the uh, no, I'm sorry bake dry they already baked so with the green one I decided that I'm just going to go and sand off the top a little bit of the top so maybe I could get a little bit of the white popping through and just wanted to see how that would look and honestly I like the way it looked better sanded than not being sanded it definitely adds a little bit more now you have also white in the in the picture you have the the green the yellow and the white and it's it just looks very very pretty that way i think it was a little bit too much green or it looked a little bit too cartoony for my liking before okay so for the top for the varnish i'm using polyurethane i'm not going to do my regular resin because i love that texture i want to wear that texture i want to touch that texture and i want to show everybody that texture so applying polyurethane is just very simple i don't want to oversaturate it just enough to cover the pendant and, and just to seal it so we're going this is a gloss polyurethane so we're going to get a gloss finish to the pendant but you can also get it in matte as well if you don't want the shine i just think the shine looked great here and there you have it here are my pendants they are already dried and i think that they came out so so nice and for the backing i'm just going to use those little backs that i'm going uh, the little uh, bezels oh my gosh what is it <laughs> that you just glue on and uh, that is going to be it I'm just going easy here so I'm going to glue it low enough so it's not uh, hanging over the top so it's completely hidden behind the pendant it's just such an easy way uh, to get your pendant to work for your chain And there you have it, E6000 in action, and we're gonna let it dry. But here I kind of wanted to, you guys to see the texture that I'm talking about. It is so, so neat. 
it really is so beautiful and this was made with the scrap clay and came out so pretty well my friends and that is today's project look how awesome they look i know this is like i kind of feel that <laughs> <laughs> the big one is like in the fall colors and I'm getting to the mood of the fall. I know it's the summer, but I'm looking forward towards the fall, okay? I want some cool weather. I'm over this heat. Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. It was just such a different thing to do, again, with stamp and the clay. And uh, you have so many options when it comes to uh, the colors you can use. And of course, you have such a much bigger control control all over the colors if you choose to color it with alcohol inks you can really go and you know paint the leaves with the green and the flowers in a different color I know that mine was you know this mush mush of, of those three colors but anyways um, I really love the way these came out I really do so what do you guys think let me know in the comments below until next time my friends Ta -ta!